Hey guys, happy Tuesday. Miss Cross here for math in the sixth week of digital learning, uh, the seventh week of the fourth nine weeks. We only have two and a half weeks of school left after this week. Can you believe it? You guys are going to be in fifth grade before you know it, and I can't handle it. You guys were in kindergarten like five minutes ago. But anyway, so this week we're going to continue finding area of rectilinear figures but we're gonna kind of slow it down. There's not gonna be slides this week um, because there's not really any new teaching. We're just still practicing what we did last week. So if you need to go back and watch one of the videos from last week or look through the slides from last week to help you um, with your work this week, that would be great. They should still be in your math section um, under your e-class. And I'm gonna give you a little project today that's gonna be due on Friday. It is not hard and you can do a really simple version of it or if you're feeling creative and have a little extra time on your hands while you're in quarantine, you can do something um, a little more fancy and uh, fun with it. But it's really not going to be hard. I'm going to model a few practice questions again today and I'm going to explain your task to you so you'll know what to start working on. Um, and to complete this project, you really only have to solve four problems. Um, so you could do one every day. You could go ahead and knock them out today and get it done. It's really up to you and your schedule. I know at our house we sometimes shift things around on days where there's more work or less work and really just try to get it done by the end of the week, which um, we are okay with for you guys too. So I am going to model two problems for you. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I'm going to talk about your task for the week. So just to review, very important that you remember that to find area of a rectangle, which is the space inside of the rectangle, you are multiplying the length times the width. So area equals length times width. Hopefully we really have a good grip on that by this point. Um, the other thing you need to remember is you're always going to have some kind of an unknown when you're solving these problems. It could be the area. You don't know what the area is, so you're multiplying to find it. You could be missing one of the side lengths, and you have to kind of work backwards like we did last week some to figure out that side length. Um, and especially in these re uh, rectilinear figures, which you also might hear called irregular figures, irregular polygons, which we've already talked about, but... Um, you might have to use the side links you have to figure out the side links you don't have. And that'll happen when you start decomposing those rectilinear figures into non-overlapping rectangles. That's what we talked about all week last week. You've got to be able to look at these figures and picture where they could be cut, decomposed, and split into different figures. And I don't think you're going to have to split any of these figures into more than three different rectangles. So two or three is what you're going to be working with. So I want to show you um, a figure and then I'm going to model how I would work this through. So hopefully you can see my figure here. So we see several side links. We see that this is eight units. We see that this across the top is five. This piece over here going this way, width side to side is two. The length of this side is six, okay? Now, I want you to also notice what is not labeled. So the bottom is not labeled, this little piece is not labeled, and this little piece is not labeled, okay? Now, if we think about this in ways we can decompose, we're gonna think about where we could draw a line to separate it into those two non-overlapping rectangles that we could then find the area of each one and then add those areas together to get the area of the whole figure. Now my drawing is not perfect. I did not use a ruler, um, but we're going to do the best we can with it. So if I look at this, I kind of start to think about this side that's sticking out and could I just draw a line right here and decompose that into two separate rectangles. Okay, my pencil disappeared, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to just draw a line on my paper to decompose it into those two pieces. 
okay? So now I have this rectangle here, and I have this smaller rectangle over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to find the area of each piece and then add it together. Now this one is not very difficult because every side that I need to multiply is already labeled. I already know my lengths and my width. So here, sorry, it's kind of hard to be sure I'm showing it to you right. This bigger rectangle, the width or the length is five and the width is eight. So if I multiply five times eight, I get 40. Hopefully everybody remembers that. So I'm just going to write that in the middle of that rectangle. So that rectangle has an area of 40 square units. Now, if I look at the other piece, I have a length of two and a width of six. So two times six is, hopefully you guys have been practicing your multiplication so you didn't forget those facts, 12. So now I just have to multiply, nope, sorry, add those two areas together to get the area of the whole figure. So 40 plus 12 equals 52 square units. Okay? Now we're going to look at one more that looks like this. Okay, so we have across the bottom a length of 10. This piece is 4. We don't know these two pieces right here, but I know that across the top is 2. This piece is 3. I don't know this, and I don't know this. Okay, now sometimes we're going to need to figure out some of those unknown lengths or widths. Again, in this one, we don't have to do that. You might have to in your project, um, and we can help you with that if you need help. But actually, I will plan to model that on Thursday to help you out. I'm going to make a note of that so we can do some of those. Um, and I'm also going to try and draw them a little bit better than these were drawn. But I could kind of see in my mind that I could draw a line right there to decompose that figure into two non-overlapping rectangles. So now I have this one down here that has a length of 10 and a width of four. And on top, it has a length of two, which I know because the top of there is two and they're the same, and then the width is three. So I'm gonna multiply two times three, which is six, to get the area of that top piece. And then I'm gonna uh, multiply four times 10, which is 40, to get the area of the bottom piece. And I'm just gonna add those together And I get a total area for the whole figure of 46 square units. Okay, so hopefully that helps you a little bit. I was helping somebody today with this and we even drew them kind of like we did last week. I'm going to draw it and then show you guys. We drew them as separate figures to help find the area. So for some of you to separate them visually like that, might be helpful. Okay, so if you are confused about any of that, let us know. Go back and watch last week's videos and look through last week's slides as well because that might be really helpful for you. Okay, so summertime is coming. Hot weather. We're going to be outside a lot. We actually started planting our garden last week. We planted a whole bunch of seeds in little cups, so hopefully in a week or so we'll start seeing sprouts. So this week you are going to help Miss Young plan a pool and a garden, okay? Now I'm gonna read through a sheet that is called Choosing a Pool and Garden. This sheet is gonna be under your math section of your e-class page. So if you wanna listen to the video while you look at the sheet, like we do with the slides, or listen to me explain it, then go look at the sheet. This sheet is gonna give you all the information you need to do your work and your kind of project for the week. So I'm gonna read through it with you. Miss Young wants to put a swimming pool and garden in her backyard. The company she has hired sent her a flyer with all of her design choices. Okay, so at the very bottom, you're going to see four different choices. So this is your task. You're going to look at each design choice and break it into two or three small rectangles. Then you're going to find the area of each of the smaller rectangles in the figure. 
You're going to write those on your recording sheet. We're going to look at that in just a minute. It's on page two of this document that you're looking at right now. Then you're going to add the areas of the smaller rectangles together to get the total area of the rectilinear figure. Now, on this paper, it says irregular shape. You need to know that that is just what we've been talking about, rectilinear figures. Okay, so you're going to do that for four figures. All right, there's four figures at the bottom of this document. And you're going to fill in your table, and when it's nice and filled in, you're going to easily be able to find your answer. So number five tells us that Ms. Young wants to choose the design with the largest area for her swimming pool. She really wants to have fun swimming this summer. I do too. I cannot wait. Um, she also wants to choose the design with the smallest area for her garden. She doesn't feel like she wants to be out weeding the garden in the hot, hot sun too much, so she wants a small area for her garden, big area for her pool. Okay, so you're going to figure out which design she wants for her pool and which she wants for her garden. So if you scroll down on your document on page two, you will see the table that you're going to fill in. Um, it has the different designs. The second column is for you to write the individual areas of the parts of the figure. So if I divide or decompose a figure into two parts, I'm going to have two areas listed there. You can just put a comma in between them. If it's three parts, you're going to have three there listed separated by commas. And then in the third column, you're going to add those numbers up to get the total area. Now, if you scroll down to page three, you're going to see designs A and B. So you're going to figure out the area of those. And I will model one on Thursday for you, um, finding a missing side link that we might need to do in these, um, just if you're unsure about that. The last page has designs C and D. You're going to find the area of those as well. Then you're going to know which one she wants for her pool, which one she wants for her garden. So I said you can be plain or fancy, either one. So if you just want to tell us the answers, um, we would like you to do that on your Google Doc. Um, and just give us a sentence or so saying, Miss Young choose design W for her pool because its area, 497 square units, was the largest. I totally just made all that up. But it's just to give you an example. Now, if you're feeling fancy and you want to draw this and uh, draw a swimming pool and write the, the side measurements on there and draw a garden, you can do that. If you want to sketch it out on graph paper, if you have graph paper at home, you can do that. Um, some of you guys who are really smart with computers, way smarter than uh, Miss Bell and I, if you know some way to do this on a computer, Google Slides or... Some of you are really fancy with like animation software that I've never even heard of. Um, anything like that, if you really kind of feel like you want to be creative, some of you like doing projects, go for it. Send us pictures, we would love it. Um, but it can also be as simple as typing a few sentences in your Google Doc after you have filled in that chart, okay? And if you want us to copy that chart into your Google Doc, just let us know and we can do that for you, no problem. So, have a great day, do a little math, Find some areas. Let us know if you need help. Um, we love you guys. We miss you. And we will see you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.